calcium carbonate, magnesium hydroxide, ferric, orthophosphate. Have you ever read some of the ingredients list on a package? Believe it or not, there's a system to the way chemical compounds are named. And this lesson is all about chemical nomenclature. So what are we gonna learn in this lesson? First, we will learn how to name binary ionic compounds. Then we'll learn how to name binary ionic compounds with transition metals. And then we'll learn about ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. And finally, we'll learn how to name binary covalent compounds. Ionic compounds are compounds that contain a cation and an anion. A cation is a positively charged ion, usually a metal, which is an element on the left side of the periodic table. An ion is a negatively charged ion, usually a non-metal which is an element on the right side of the periodic table. A binary compound is a compound that only has two different types of elements. These are some examples. Notice that each formula follows a pattern where the cation is listed first and then the anion is listed second. The name follows the same pattern where the cation is named first and the anion comes second. Here are the steps to turn a formula into a name. First, write the name of the cation. In this case, the cation is aluminum. There's no need to worry about these subscripts. Second, write the name of the anion and then change its ending to IDE, ID. Again, no need to worry about the subscripts. That's it, so this compound is called aluminum sulfide. How about going the other way, from a formula to a name? First, write the symbol for the ions with the charges. Magnesium is in group two, so it has a two plus charge. Chloride is actually chlorine, here in group seven. Everything in group seven will have a minus one charge. Next, we need to balance the charges by adding more ions. The total positive charge is two plus, and the total negative charge is minus one. So I can add another chloride to make the total negative charge two minus, because there's two chlorides now. We can write the formula indicating the number of each element with a subscript. No need to include the subscript one if there's only one of that element. There's only one magnesium, and two chlorides. So the formula is MgCl2. It's easy to determine the charge of a representative element. That's these ones here. Group one is plus one, group two is two plus, and group three is three plus. Group four will generally not form ions, so we'll skip them. Group five will have three minus charge, group six will have a two minus charge, and group seven will have a minus one charge. Group eight are the noble gases. They will not form ions. So why did we skip over the middle section here? Well, these are the transition metals, and they don't follow this pattern to determine their charges. A transition metal will have all kinds of different charges, like manganese. Manganese can have a charge of plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, plus six, and plus seven. So how do I know which manganese it is in a compound? We have to somehow indicate the charge on the transition metal when we write the name. We indicate the charge by writing the appropriate Roman numeral after the name of the metal to indicate its charge. So magnesium with a plus one charge is magnesium one, and magnesium with a two plus charge is magnesium two, and so on. So here's how we write the name of a binary ionic compound that includes a transition metal. We follow the same set of steps as with regular ionic compounds. First, write the name of the cation. In this case, the cation is manganese. Second, write the name of the anion, and then change its ending to ide. So in this case, it's oxide. Now we need to figure out the charge on manganese. The best way to do this is to figure out the total negative charge and then use that to determine the total charge on the transition metal. The total negative charge has to be equal to the total positive charge in an ionic compound. I like to set up a grid like this where I separate the ions on the positive side and the ions on the negative side. For this compound, there are three oxygen ions and two manganese ions. And then for this compound, there are three oxygen ions and only one manganese ion. The charge of oxide is always two minus because it's in group six. There are three oxides in each compound, so the total negative charge is six minus. The total positive charge must balance this, so the total positive charge must be six plus. Now we can distribute this positive charge evenly. There are two manganese here, so they will have a charge of three plus each. And then there is only one manganese over in this compound, so that one manganese must have a charge of six plus. Now we can insert the charge after the name of the transition metal. So we have manganese three oxide and manganese six oxide. 
Sometimes ionic compounds will contain polyatomic ions. These are not binary ionic compounds because there's more than two types of elements. There are literally multiple atoms bonded together that have an overall charge. So SO3 2 minus is a group of one sulfur and three oxygen atoms bonded together and they overall have a two minus charge. Works the same way as an oxide ion, which also has a two minus charge. These two ions will form compounds in the same way because they both have a two minus charge. So if oxygen reacts with manganese four plus, we need two oxygen atoms to balance the four plus charge of manganese. And if sulfite reacts with manganese four plus, we need two sulfite ions to balance the four plus charge of manganese. To name ionic compounds with polyatomic ions, you can follow these steps. Number one, write the name of the cation. And then number two, write the name of the anion. No need to change the ending. You will have to learn a list of common polyatomic ions. I've included a list of common polyatomic ions as an attachment to this lesson. So this compound is called ammonium nitrate. To go from a name to a formula, you follow the same set of steps with any other ionic compound. Take this one for example. Write the ions with the charges, and then balance the charges by adding more ions if necessary. So aluminum has a 3 plus charge, and carbonate has a 2 minus charge. We need to find a common multiple between 3 plus and 2 minus, which would be 6. So we need 2 aluminums to get 6 plus, and we need 3 carbonates to get 6 minus. Now we can write the formula using subscripts to identify the amount of each ion. So we'll need two aluminum, so it's Al2, and then we have three carbonates. If we try to add a subscript at the end of CO3, it's going to say CO33, saying 33 oxygens. That's not what we mean. We mean three carbonate ions. So we put brackets around the CO3, and then put the three on the outside. This tells us that there's three of everything inside the brackets. So our formula is this. Finally, we have covalent compounds, which are also known as molecular compounds. Covalent compounds are made up of nonmetals, so elements only on the right side of the periodic table. When we name covalent compounds, the amount of each element is going to be an important part of that name. Notice the second element ends in ide, just like binary ionic compounds. The difference, however, are these prefixes. The prefixes indicate the amount of each type of element. You should know the prefixes for 1 through 10. Mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, deca. Notice that if there's only one of the first element, we don't add the prefix mono. We only add the prefix mono to the second element if there's only one of the second element. The steps in naming binary covalent compounds are number one, write the name of the first element and add an appropriate prefix to indicate the amount of that element. And number two, write the name of the second element, change its ending to ide, and add an appropriate prefix to indicate the amount of that element. SF6 would be sulfur hexafluoride. CO2 is carbon dioxide, and CO is carbon monoxide. To go from a name to a formula, first write the symbol of the first element and add a subscript according to the prefix. And then write the symbol of the second element and add a subscript according to its prefix. Phosphorus pentachloride would be PCl5. So did you learn everything in this lesson? Well, if you did, you learned how to name binary ionic compounds. You learned how to name binary ionic compounds with transition metals. You learned how to name ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. And finally, you learned how to name binary covalent compounds. And now you have the skills to read some of those ingredients lists around your home. Sodium bicarbonate, zinc sulfate, magnesium hydroxide.